Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Jake Whip. Today we're going to be checking out making a shapes burst animation inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now this is super useful for kinetic typography, uh, if you guys are doing motion graphics and intro, stuff like that. So if you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel with the notifications on so you guys never miss out when I upload a new video. If you guys do wish to support me further, I have a buy me a coffee and a Patreon that are linked below. If you guys would like all these motion graphics but do not want to make them yourself, I have the motion graphics kit. And pretty much what the motion graphics kit is, is it's a bunch of motion graphics animations that you guys can overlay to make your final effect. This includes four different shape burst effects that you guys can add to make unlimited possibilities. If that's something you're interested in, check out the link down below as well as the coupon code to get 20% off. Anyways, back into the video. So I'm just in a blank fusion composition here. Alright, and what we're going to do is create each of the individual shapes that I want first. So the shapes that I want is going to be a rectangle, a triangle, and a pentagon, okay? Those are the three shapes that I'm going to want to do. So let's start out with the easiest, and that's just going to be a rectangle, okay? And then we'll grab a rectangle and a background, okay? Connect these up, and then hit one on your keyboard so you can see it. And now what we'll do is we want to make these as optimal as possible. So that means as low resolution as possible. So not 1920 by 1080 for an individual, like, little square, okay? So what we're going to do is grab a second background. This background we're going to make uh, transparent just by bringing the alpha down. Then connect this up into the media out. And now if we take this background and just drag it into the output of background 2, as you can see we have a merge node that appears. But if we come into the background 2 and come up to the uh, image, then uncheck auto resolution. As you can see we can adjust the resolution to be however big or small we want. So let's right click on the height, do expression, then connect that to the width. And now as you can see we can easily make a smaller box. So this is going to be pretty much our size control for the rectangle. So let's just come into the rectangle and then uh, set the width to be 1, as well as the height to be 1. And that's going to mean that it's going to be taking up the entire background. So now this is going to be 452 pixels wide and 452 pixels tall. So let's just get it to about the size that we want our shape to be. Something like that. And in the rectangle, I'm going to uncheck solid and then up the border width. Okay? And if we uh, zoom in here, as you can see, that's coming up. And what we can do is... Uh, type in our custom value, so let's do 0.3, not 32, that'd be way too much, 0.3, okay? And I, I'm liking that uh, intensity, okay? And in the background, let's change this to whatever color we want, I think white looks pretty good, all right? That'll just help it stand out a little bit more, we might change it to a different color later. All right, so now that's done, let's go ahead and work on building the triangle, okay? So if we just shift space and type triangle, we have our uh, triangle tool, okay? And now if we add a background, uh, we will just connect these up and view it off to the side here again. Let's come right into the background and then do the unchecking auto resolution expression and connecting that up. It's not square. But that triangle doesn't look quite right, okay? So let's go ahead and mess around with the settings until we get something that we like. So first let's go ahead and come into the background and look at the resolution. 73. So let's go ahead and start at 73 on this one, okay? And now we can merge these up uh, together. And now we can merge this up back on top. Right, now we have our triangle. So let's come into the triangle, uncheck solid, and then bring up the border until we get to about the same thickness. Now let's change the border style to one of these ones that is a little bit sharper, okay? And now as you can see, that extends past our uh, background. So what we need to do is bring these points in a little bit closer. So let's go ahead and do that. So point two, we'll just bring this in until it is uh, touching the edge, okay? Or point one, I'm sorry. There we go, and we'll bring the Y up until, well that one's actually pretty good, okay? So we'll leave that at point 0.1. Okay, now we'll bring down the border width to get it to the correct size again. And in the background, we can uh, scale this one up a little bit more. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We can leave it at that for now and come back and change it later. So last, uh, we have the pentagon. So if we come to shift space and type pentagon, um, there is no tool for that, okay? So you'll, how you could do it is you could do it in 3D by grabbing a shape and then uh, setting to torus, okay? And we'll come up and give it a 90 degree rotation. And we can come up and set the base subdivisions uh, to five, okay? Then there we go, we have a pentagon. It is in 3D. We could bring the uh, section down and the radius, whatever we want, okay? But uh, this isn't as optimal. It'll take a lot longer to render than uh, tracing it, okay? So I have a pentagon picture here. It's just a PNG, okay? And you could just use the PNG, but then we can't adjust the border width on it. So instead, let's grab a polygon node, okay? 
click that and then just start tracing it okay getting it as close as possible so we'll just click right here and we can come down here so now that's traced i'm just going to delete the media in one okay then we'll grab another background and connect this up as we've done the last ones okay and now as you can see we have our shape now it looks a little distorted because the resolution is different uh in the pentagon it was a square and this one, it is 16 by 9 instead of 1 by 1, okay? Let's come into the background and do the same thing with the settings. And now, as you can see, we have a scaling uh, pentagon, okay? So let's come into the polygon again and then go ahead, uncheck solid, bring up the border, okay? We can't go too far before the edges start cutting off. So an easy thing to do is we can just come down to the size and scale this down, okay? And again, we've got to change our point to the uh, pointed edges. Let's go ahead scale the background back down to about uh, the 70, 78, that looks pretty good. And we'll come back in here and scale up the border. There we go. Now let's come into the background color and set this to white. Okay, so next up we'll be animating all these shapes. I'm just going to delete all the merges, okay? And let's just do the rectangle first, okay? And so what we'll do is we'll add in a transform node. And then we will merge this transform node up onto the background, okay? And what we're going to do is have the starting animation be all the way, um, th the size all the way at zero. Add a keyframe on that, the angle, and then the center position. Now if we come, let's say, th uh, 40 frames forward, we can always retime this later. I'll bring the scale back up to its default. I add a bunch of rotation to it and move it off to the side, okay? So now it'll, like, burst out a little bit, okay? And actually with the size, um, I'm going to come to about frame, let's say, 14, and I'm going to have the size back at the default, okay? So we'll do something like that. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is animate like, I'm going to say two to three for each one of these, okay? And we'll just be doing the same method for all of them. Something that I'm going to do is create one that already has the size uh, built into it. So it gets all the way big at frame 14, okay? And then I'll just copy this one and paste it so I don't have to worry about the size animation on any of the other ones. And I can just stay at frame 40 the entire time. All right, so I'm good with that. I'm just gonna have two of the pentagon, but that is totally fine. And now if we come back to the beginning, as you can see, we have a bunch of shapes uh, burst out. Now we're gonna go ahead and smooth out the animations. Let's come into the spline editor. And then what we'll do is we'll select all of these. Okay, and now they all appear over here. And if we drag them over, and now we just gotta go through and select each of these, okay? And we'll just go click all of them. And they will all appear here, okay? So now what we can do is we'll just select all these last keyframes. Okay, then hit F, and now we can just ease it in like all the way, okay? And then we'll also select the size here, and we will also hit F, okay? And we can also hit F at the beginning, but then bring the ease out just down a little bit. So now if we go through and play this, as you can see, it slows down once it gets to the uh, end. And now one last uh, step that we need to do is animate the border width on all of these so that it gets smaller at the end and kind of fades off. So let's go to about frame, uh, let's say uh, 28, okay? And add a keyframe on all of these at the border width, okay? And this is going to be the frame that it starts, uh, like, disappearing. And then we'll go to frame 40 and bring the border width back to zero. Okay, now that that's done, select all of these, um, have them selected over here. Then uh, uh, select all those, hit F, and then do easy ease in and set that to about 40. So now if we go ahead and play this, as you can see, the lines uh, just kind of disappear at the end. But I think that's a little too short. Let's come into the keyframes editor, select all these, okay? And now we can select all these first points, okay? And we'll just bring this back a little bit. And there we go. So now if we play this, as you can see, uh, that'll uh, like fade out a little bit earlier. All right, well, that is your shape burst effect. As you can see, that was pretty easy to pull off. If you guys want to get this, I will have it available on my Patreon for my Patreon supporters. And make sure you guys comment down below what uh, motion graphics you guys want me to make in the future. But other than that, that is all I have for you. So guys, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and I'll see you guys next time for another video.